and Tyro means the world to me. Um, Tyro is taking those principles of the faith that I had um, and just uh, very honestly making them into tools, making them into tools to help uh, sort of uh, restore who I am as a person in order so that I can be able to help others. <laughs> Welcome to Tyro TV. I'm Ron Thirina, and today we have a special guest for you via Zoom. You know, with this COVID pandemic and everything taking place, you know, we got to adjust, we got to pivot. And that's what life's about. It's about pivoting. So we are so thankful that Irvin Santana, Tyro Irvin Santana, was able to pivot in his busy schedule and take a pause for us today. So welcome, Irvin Santana. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate it. Well, I, I want you to know that we're going to air this out. We're going to let all these guys who may be being incarcerated, even people on the streets, they're going to be watching this video. So I'm, I'm asking you to just be open and we're going to have a candid conversation. We're not going to try to box you in, man. So I really want you to share your life experiences and what it means to be a Tyro. Sure, absolutely. Um, I, well, I guess I'll start with how I heard about Tyro. Um, I heard about Tyro, uh, quite honestly, via Facebook and some friends. Um it, it was actually at a place of employment where I was working at. Um, I worked for a, at that time, a construction company that was actually doing um, second chance employment. So we were actually a company that did hire uh, men and women who came out of incarceration and reintegrating into, into society, coming back home and they needed a job. So we were willing to do that, also do skill sets training. Um, at that time, while I was working there, I very honestly was having a lot of marital issues. A lot of problems at home um, and when I say problems I mean they were they were fairly deep and uh, changed my life that's why I think uh, that's that's why I was attracted to Tyro I heard that Tyro had some tools um, to be able to help me possibly rebound and sort of get back on track with my life um, if I can I'd, I'd like to share just a couple of minutes of um, sort of what led me to get to that point absolutely, absolutely. I needed help. Irvin, that is exactly what we want you to do. That's what we, we're excited about having you on our show today, to share with everybody about your journey and what it means to be a Tyro and how you activated these key principles in your life to be the, the man you are today and to really walk this path of success despite what you've experienced, despite your shortcomings, despite the pitfalls you were able to overcome. And that's what really excites us. So if you're looking for those answers, if you've got questions about what you need to do, you know what, here's a story that's going to help inspire you, motivate you, that if Irvin Santana can do it, if I I can do it. So can you. So stay tuned. We're going to take a commercial break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Tyro TV. Today, we have a special guest with us, Irvin Santana, and you don't want to miss this. So, so as we get into this, Irvin, let me ask you this. Sure. You know, I know you, you're going to, we're going to share your journey, and it's a powerful journey, you know, but there are a lot of guys out there that are experiencing uh, domestic violence, that are experiencing trauma and drama, right? And, sure. and what I really want to do is be able to empower them that there is way out. There is, there is hope. There's life after whatever it is they're experiencing. And so if you could take us to the journey, uh, not to, to skip a lot, but to take us to where you found yourself at a place where, you know what, I'm desperate, I need help. Sure. Um, that place was in a jail cell. That place was uh, in a room with a whole bunch of other men who quite honestly were dealing with the very same issue that I was dealing with. And we had all hit rock bottom. Uh, I had personally um, just, uh, I had gotten a charge for domestic violence. Uh, my marriage went off kilter uh, and it led to the point where it became violent, where I let all my emotions, all my hurt, all my pain, all of those kinds of things well up into violence. And I didn't just hit um, a, a wall. I went through the wall. Um, I mm -hmm. punched through the wall and everything that was behind that wall. And I did a lot of damage. And so, that so mm -hmm. Irvin, so so what led up you because earlier you mentioned that you know your your marriage was on the rocks and you were you were sure you were bringing guys in from from who were coming home from prison into your yes. workplace and you heard about Tyro but you didn't realize that 
you were gonna go through the program when right. you were doing that, right? Right. So I was, you know, I would listen to a lot of the men that would come out of these different uh, kind of reintegration programs and I would hear their stories. Um, I became really good friends. I still have a lot of good friends uh, through this. And then some of them were mentioning Tyro. And um, I didn't realize that at the time, I didn't think I needed it. I thought I had my act together. I thought I knew what I was doing. I'm, I can control what's happening. So I thought, you know, I could control um, where my marriage was going, not realizing that it was already gone. Wow. I thought I could control where my children, um, uh, what they were feeling, and, and I could be a better father to them later, because right now I was working all the time that they understood but what my children didn't understand. I thought I was connected with them. We weren't connected at all. My children knew mom, and all they knew is this guy who came home from work and would go to sleep and then go do another 12-hour, 16-hour shift. So when it so, finally came to a head, when, the, when mm -hmm. they put enough pressure on that pipe and it finally blew up, what happened? Um, well, my spouse was looking for a partner and I was not there. So she looked elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in the process, um, I of course got upset about it. I was, I was mad about it. It ended up where we argued. I ended up um, striking my wife, hitting her. Um, and all of, those, all of those feelings of control and thinking that I knew what I was doing and thinking that I knew what it was to be a husband and a father, it just, that whole facade fell apart mm. at that moment. And I knew I had to get help. I just didn't know where. And so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of books and materials out there on being a good father and husband, but I didn't look in that direction. I thought I already knew. Right. And in reality, I was just doing a lot of guesswork. In reality, I was just trying to to keep the sinking boat from sinking. Mm, uh, a lot of trial and and error. Sure, a lot of trial and error. And when I was in that, uh, when I was in that cell and I was sitting there and I was thinking and reviewing over my life, I knew I just don't know what I'm doing. I need to ask for help. I need to ask for help. And you know what's funny is I would always advise the guys at work, if you need help. If you need to learn a skill set, something, ask. Mm. And yet I myself with the most important project, with the most important thing of, in my life, which was my family and my marriage, I did not ask for help. So, you know, I know when I met you, Irvin, when you, when you reached out to us and I knew there was something about you that you were hungry. You yes. were hungry for something new and yes. you were open and you were, and you were, you were teachable. So yes. what I hear you saying is in the beginning, you weren't teachable, but when you got, when you hit this rock bottom, you humbled yourself and you said, you know what? I need to learn these skills. I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. I need somebody to be my mentor, somebody to be my teacher, somebody to teach me how to be a husband, how to be a, a man worth following, how to be a father. Yes. And that, and that's key. Pride comes before a fall. Mm. And I was very prideful. So my fall was very hard. And I needed to learn to very honestly trust God and, and trust those principles that I was raised in. I'm a Christian. I, was, I came to faith when I was in my teens, when I was 17 years old. And so I had all these principles before me, but I didn't put them to use. And especially when I got married, I didn't apply what I knew could help me. And so I needed to reset myself. And I knew at this point in my life, sitting in that jail cell, I knew I need to humble myself. I don't know everything. Um, and if I continue going the way I'm going, I'm just going to make it worse. So I need to stop and sort of do, do a, a reboot. I need to reboot. I need to, to, get, to get connected somehow uh, to a source that can help me on the hows because I was too prideful to ask how to do this. Wow. And that's where Tyro came in. Well, you know what? I appreciate your honesty and, and, and really your transparency with everybody here. And so uh, I want to encourage you that uh, you're encouraging others by your transparency right now. And you're, you're, you know, a lot of people go through these experiences of domestic violence, but they don't know where to turn or they don't want to talk about it because you're embarrassed. You walk in mm -hmm. shame and you walk in mm -hmm. guilt and guilt will lock you up. Right. Oh, yes. And, and oh, it'll yes. put this dark cloud over your, your whole being to where you can't even get ahead. You don't even want to get up in the morning. You don't want to face the mirror. Right. Because guilt has mm -hmm. that power of incarcerating you mentally, emotionally and spiritually and physically. 
Yes. Right? So you found yourself in physical incarceration. And so I want to take a commercial break, but when I want to come sure. back, I want to ask you what happened to your friends and to your peers out there? I want to, I want to, uh, did everybody clean sure. to help you or did they, did, you know, they, did they run from you or did, were you able to get that support from family? You know, cause a lot of times with these types of stigmas, you know, unfortunately people run. So I'd like to hear your, your, your experience to that. I think others would too. So we come back, we're going to hear more from Urban Santana on this journey of recovery. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome to Tyro. I'm Ron Tijerina. And I'm Kathy Tijerina. And Ron and I are the co-creators of Tyro. Tyro is a Latin word, which means apprentice, novice, someone learning something new, a warrior. Your job isn't to extract value from your friends, your family, or your community. Your job is to create value, to create value in every situation that you find yourself in, to help others become more successful. So what I want you to do is I want you to list three things that you add to your friendships, to your family, and to your community. Listen, you are fighting every day for something, and maybe you don't even know what you're fighting for, but when Tyro comes into your life, it's there not only to empower you, but to give you a clear vision and a clear direction of what you're fighting for. So really what Tyro means is to fight for your legacy, to become a leader in your home, your community, and your workplace. Hello guys, I'm Tremaine Hall. Lead coach of Tyro Fit Skills Program. And I'm Brandon Tiarina, the Senior Director of Tyro Support Services. We've partnered together to bring you such an amazing workout program that's going to take you to the next level. Because there is a measure of joy and a measure of pain in everybody's life. So when we think about shock and the impact of shock, Typically, people don't find themselves stuck in shock. Most of the time, people can navigate out of that. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to think of a time that you experienced shock in your life, and we want you to write it down. Welcome back to Tyra TV. Today, we have a special guest, a really a good friend of mine by the name of Irvin Santana. And he's sharing with us his journey, what it meant from, from being down and out, from going to the county jail, from finding his way, right, into becoming a healthy adult, from manhood, right, and, and understanding that he's no longer a grown man with little boy issues, but he's a healthy adult. And so, Irvin, if you could share with us um, your experience of when society found out, you know, when you were in the paper and everything, what happened? How did that, how did you deal sure. with that? Well, the, the, the first thing that I realized was that um, in life, we have a lot of acquaintances. We have a lot of friends. We ha I didn't realize the multiplicity factor of my influence on others um, throughout my life. So when I did commit um, this act of abuse against my family, um, and it was on the radio, <laughs> you know, it was in the newspaper, um, I lost many friends. I did lose many friends. Um, uh, and it was at that time, it was, I think it was just due to um, non-communicate, no communication whatsoever with me. Um, and then, and then secondly, um, I did learn that there were, there were people in my sphere, in my world that were willing to come alongside me and, and to help me um, to, to heal and to get back on track with my life and also to help me to help my family heal because the biggest thing for me was it was still, I still believe it's my responsibility as a father and even as an ex-husband to continue to help um, bring a healthier lifestyle and way of living to my family and to my, um, to my ex-wife and her partner, whom we're friends now with. But I did at the time um, for about a year or so, there were quite a few friends that were hesitant to approach me, um, some that are no longer friends, uh, regrettably. Um, so, and um, some who came alongside. So one of the things that I hear you saying is that through your journey, when you had to deal with the reality of it, that you dealt with, with, with the guilt, but you also owned it. And I yes. think by owning it, which we learn in Tyro is to own our story 
is that now the healing can take place once you begin to own your journey or, or own the mess that you created, right? Yes. And not yes. blame others. Yes. And that and that also deals with, you know, it helped me to deal with depression and um, this self victimization mentality, you know, of, uh, you know, woe is me. There, there was no woe is, is me, to be very honest. It was, I caused this situation. It's my responsibility to help heal it and bring and bring new life. Um, my children, for instance, it's my responsibility to teach them how to be resilient. And, you know, I have a daughter, you know, and she's a teenager. You know, so the way I treat her mother is vitally important for her to be able to see how men should treat women, you know, and, and how a partner should treat each other in relationships. I have a son. It is my responsibility to show my son that as a man, I failed. And this is how you can correct. This is how the direction you, you I, I needed to go in in order to show him how to be a man um, and how to treat others. Because it's important that our, our children understand healthy relationships. And I didn't have a healthy relationship. So I wanted him to know what that was. So the legacy that you were building was, was yes. crumbling. But now the yes. legacy that you are building a build a, on a solid foundation. So even, yes. even when you, you lost your reputation, when you destroyed what you thought you had built, but now mm -hmm. you're rebuilding a new reputation. You're reinventing yourself. You know, that's one of the things yes. you learn in Cairo, right? You recognize yes. the situation, right? And you were able to re start renewing the way you think about it, right? Then you began to rebuild. Then you reinvented mm -hmm. yourself. And now, Irvin, what I'm really excited about, how you're reinvesting back into the community. How people actually have, they know your story. Because one thing I, I love sure. about you, you, Irvin, you don't keep it to yourself. You tell people. Listen, yes. I'm not successful today be, overnight. This was not an overnight success. We want to share right. also about your journey where you're at today, because I'm really proud of you, you, Irvin. I'm proud of the fact that you owned your story, that you, were, you weren't willing to let it define who you are, but you were sure. willing to, you know what, own it, look at it, learn from it, and grow from it. And now you teach others. Now you empower others to own their story and to not let it define them, but let them qualify them for something greater for the future. All right. Yes. So... So, Irvin, let me ask you this one question. With your relationship with your kids and the, what you're building now, how is it compared to when you were at home with your ex-wife to what it is today? Um, it's completely different. Um, the dynamics are completely different. Um, the transparency, for one, with my children is amazing. Um, I am very close to my children. My children are very close to me. Um, anyone that, that, that knew me before would always see me gone. I was always gone. Um, and now, uh, whenever anyone sees me, they see me with one of my children. I, every, everything, everything that I try to do, I try to include my children in. I want them to be a part of it because I want them to be a part of my life and I want to be a part of theirs. You know, um, I love my children very much and I, I want them to have um, the success in life that I, that I dream of and that I'm aspiring to. So when, you know, I go out to, to work out, I take my son with me. You know, when uh, I'm working on, um, uh, I'm studying right now online. So when I'm working on my schoolwork, I have my daughter working on her schoolwork with me as well. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, we, 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 we take many vacations together. Um, I, I have uh, been able to um, uh, be able to share my story with others in different, in different um, organizations as well. So there's an organization in Defiance called Children's Lantern, and I was able to share um, my story as well with Children's Lantern. I'm able to share at different church and, and uh, small Bible study groups, things of that nature, to let people know that, you know, that uh, incidences like this that happened in my life don't have to define my life, but I can take the lessons that I learned and build on those lessons and, and, and lead myself into a different direction than I was going. That's wonderful, man. That's what I'm talking about. I know personally, we've all met your family. We met your, your children and to see them inspire and grow has just been an amazing journey to watch them be, yeah. become healthy people. But listen, when we come back, we got to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, um, we're going to talk about Irvin Santana's journey where he's at right now and the success that he's been able to implement despite his shortcomings, despite what happened, he didn't let it define him. That's key to each and every one of our journeys. We all have issues. We all go through situations. But how do we conquer it? How do we overcome it? And then how do we empower others based upon what we experience? So we come back. We're going to let Irvin tell us where he's at now in his journey. He mentioned school. So we want to look deep into that. It's okay, what are you doing? What are you studying? All right. So stay tuned. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Tyro TV. We have a special guest, a powerful friend of mine by the name of Irvin Santana. And, and Irvin, I want to ask you a question. You know, we've heard your journey, but now let's talk about Tyro, how it's empowered you to be the successful man that you are today, the father that you are today, the heck ex-husband. You're a successful ex-husband. Can't say that about many people, right? <laughs> we hope we can. But if, tell us about Tyro and, and what it means to you. Sure. Um, Tyro means the world to me. Um, Tyro is taking those principles of the faith that I had um, and just uh, very honestly making them into tools, making them into tools to help uh, sort of uh, restore who I am as a person in order so that I can be able to help others. I have a personal motto, which is I give what who I am. So who I am is what I am offering the world is what I'm offering my children. So I have to build myself up. I have to be a, a, a healthy, functioning father, friend, son, uh, a church member in order to be able to give back um, something uh, healthy to that community. If I'm broken, if I'm tore down, if I'm beat up, um, then that's what I have to give. Mm -hmm. And so my previous marriage uh, or my first marriage and my previous, uh, what I call my previous life, um, I was that broken person. So that's all I could give. But mm -hmm. now Tyro has given me a toolbox of tools that I can use that will help me to uh, become a better me, a healthier me, and in turn also be able to help uh, strengthen my family and those around me. And so some of the tools that I've learned from Tyro, one of them, the biggest one, especially we just finished speaking about um, people being there, who was there and who wasn't, you know, um, uh, after my uh, domestic case. And that was, um, I learned that I had also some haters. And so I had to learn how do I deal with these haters? And there's an acronym in, in Tyro that we have for haters, which is having anger towards everyone reaching success. And I realized I could not take personal their anger. I could not adopt their anger at me. Um, they, they may have been justified in their frustration with me and, and the decision that I made, but I could not live in their opinion of my future and my, and my personal state at that time. So one of the things I learned from Ty Tyro is, is how to deal with haters. Uh, and, and part of that is dealing with my sphere of influence. And in Tyro, we learn who is around us, who are, who are the people we keep close to us and who are those that we sort of keep at arm's length. Not that we wanna disconnect. And sometimes there are people that we have to, you know, um, say farewell to for a while because it's just not gonna be a healthy thing for myself or for them. And so I had to learn dealing with my haters, I had to keep them at an arm's length. You know, I'm the type of person, I'm a forgiving person. I'm willing to, you know, to work with others, but I'm also um, at that time and even now, I'm very um, cognizant of those who are around me and those I leave, uh, I permit into my, into my world um, because I'm trying to build a better world, a better world for myself and for my children. Th so those two things. And also um, there's a concept throughout all of Tyro that we talk about, and that is DTIP. Don't take it personal. And sometimes we hear that phrase. And the one thing I loved about uh, Tyro is, is that it would constantly be reinforced. This is not uh, a, a principle to tell others. This is a principle we live by. And so DTIP is something that I live by. So I'm learning throughout life because I did have some depression. I did have sadness, guilt, fear, all of these different things. I had to learn that, you know, not to detip into everything. And then the, the reason behind it too was another Tyro principle, which is, um, am I a Tyro or am I a lame? You know, mm -hmm. am I going to be poison or am I going to be the antidote? And in my situation, I, like I said before, I created the situation so I can become the antidote. And I realized that throughout my life, I had been poisoned. And here I have an opportunity now to change that and become the antidote. So applying some of these principles and these teachings from Tyro, um, these tools and starting to use them in my life. And I use them on a weekly basis. I review myself every week about my life, where I'm going, my connectedness with my children, how I treat my ex-wife and how I treat her partner for that matter, because he and I have become very good friends. So, you know, I, I want to be able to be in a position where I help bring uh, a very good lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, successful family lifestyle to uh, my family and to those around me. And Tyro has given me those tools to do that. Well, that sounds amazing. I really appreciate you uh, expounding on the principles that you have learned and that you have able to ignite 
and yes. take it to a new level in your life. And you're right. This takes a daily walk, a daily examination yeah. of one another. So listen, we come back. We're going to wrap all this up. So uh, we're going to get let Irvin give his last word to you because I really wanted to share if there's anything, Irvin, think about this. If there's anything you can leave with the people that are, are watching this, that's what I want you to do. Expound something. Give them something that, that will empower them to see the next level in their life. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. I'm your coach, Tremaine Hall. We're looking forward to getting you to the next level in where you want to be in fitness. Our whole method is to make you mentally tough and also physically strong. We're going to start with dynamic warm-up, lower core, upper body, and also full body blast. Get ready to take your fitness to the next level. Tyro Fit and Steno. Welcome back to Tyro TV. Today we have a guest, Irvin Santana, with us, and we have been having a great time listening to his story and his journey. Irvin, if there's anything that you could leave for the viewers, what would that be? And, and just take a few minutes and just really uh, drop those nuggets down that will help empower and inspire others. Sure. Um, first thing I guess I would say uh, is forgive yourself. Uh, in your forgiveness, you're going to find freedom. And I, I truly believe that when you forgive yourself, you're permitting yourself to let go of hurt, pain, regrets that you may have, um, and permitting yourself to be able to move on. Uh, so forgive yourself. Secondly is try to reestablish connections and relationships uh, uh, with others, maybe who were involved in your situation. Um, be able to say, I'm sorry, and forgive me. You know, because as you forgive yourself, you're also going to want to permit someone else to be able to release forgiveness into your life as well and um, to ask for forgiveness from others if you've done something wrong. It's hard to do. It's, 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 it's an issue of, of, uh, of pride, to be very honest. And uh, like I said before, you know, pride became, came before my fall. And so the best thing to do is, is in order to be able to find healing for your life and, and restructure your life, it's good to go ahead and to, to try to at least apologize and say, I'm sorry to the one that was affected by what you did. Uh, I did. Um, it took some time for the person to, to respond to that. Um, and I gave them that time. They, they deserve that time. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, um, Ron, I, I'm into co-parenting. I believe in co-parenting. I believe in, in working uh, with, your, with my ex. Um, I was married for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we work together well as parents. And that's one thing that I can say about my ex today is that she's an excellent parent. And so um, I speak highly of her. My, my daughter recently um, uh, in May is going to spend time in the summer and um, with has been spending time with her mom this summer and is planning on moving in with her mom. So during that time, uh, mom didn't have all of the different things at home that, that she may have needed for a ride. We worked as a team, went and got some furniture, went and got some things and moved, moved my daughter in and moved her in and also helping the family out, you know, and helping um, that home because what I would want for my home, I would want for my ex-wife's home as well. They see a, a, a mom who's healthy and strong and doing well. Um, I'd rather my children grow up with a mother like that than to see uh, parents who are bitter and hurt and struggling. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to do is to throw my children into poverty. And if, if, if there's anything I say today is uh, think about the legacy you are leaving. You want to leave your children better off than when you arrived here on planet earth, you know, you know, so. Irvin, that has been a great, great action plan, call to action. And, and I want to encourage everybody who took time to watch this video today, take some notes, go back, rewind this video, watch it again, because there's a lot of nuggets that, that Irvin has dropped to us to really help us. And it's inspired me to become a better dad. You know, we, I'm always working to be a better dad, a better husband. You know, we want what we want something better for our kids. Right. Well, Irvin, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. No and, and I appreciate everybody on, on the, on, that, that's watching this to allow us to be part of your journey. And as we end, like always, always remember, we are rooting for you.